Welcome to the What is a Widget tutorial. Here we're going to explore the role of web parts or widgets and give you some step-by-step -step instructions on how to use them in SharePoint. So for this portion, we're going to cover web parts. We're going to restrict our view to the list view web parts because it is the part which is most closely associated with information collaboration. Web parts or widgets are like small blocks of a user interface which you can compose together to build a page or a site. For example, a news web part or an email web part, a stock web part, sports scores, YouTube videos, these are all examples of a little piece of a user interface which you can compose together to get an aggregate view in a portal style application. In terms of information collaboration, the web parts are called List view web parts. They show the information from a list or a library and let you add items or documents. This way you can create a single page which shows information across lists and libraries in a site, removing the need for the user to navigate to the individual lists and libraries themselves. So in this section, we'll focus on list view web parts. These are web parts that allow us to interact with list or library data but along the way you'll find a general idea of how web parts work in SharePoint. So let's take a look at a simple example by creating a web part page, that is a page that supports the use of web parts. So in the diagram below, we go to the site contents and scroll down and click on the icon site pages as shown below. So for step two, we're going to go to the Files tab, and on the ribbon, click on the drop-down arrow on the New Document button. We'll select the Web Part page from the options. Then we jump over to step three, and we name this page's Courses, just as an example, and then we need to decide the layout of the page. So the Web Parts is added into the Web Part Zones. Keep in mind the layout here determines the number and the layout of these zones. So we also get an idea of what the zones look like themselves. We can have just one web part zone that takes up an entire page, a header and a column and a body, or a header and a footer and several columns. In this case, we just need one web part zone as an example. Hence, we select full vertical page and then press create. So here you can see the web part zone and its inside part. You can see a link that lets us add a web part, and then you just click on the link. So for step five, the web part gallery will open up, and this page shows us the web parts that are available to be added to the page, and these are broken down into categories. The web parts we're interested in for this example are in the apps category. You'll also notice that there is a web part for each of the lists and libraries that are used on your site. So finally on step six and seven, you can see the course documents in the web part. So we're gonna add a web part one more time and then click the courses list and then press add. And as step seven shows, once you're finished adding the web parts, just click the Stop Editing in the ribbon. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for tuning in and listening more about widgets and how to get started using them in SharePoint.